Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are back with some more Mattel Jurassic World figures, and this one is the beginning of the Wild Roar assortment. We've got ourselves the Gripposuchus, and this is one that, honestly, I was so looking forward to. Words cannot even begin to describe it at this point. There's this one and the Acrix and Atosaurus that I'm most psyched about when it comes to this line, so I figured I would start with the Gripposuchus. And you can see the box art is pretty much your standard when it comes to the Epic Evolution line. If we turn it around, you can see a nice shot of the figure here on the back and the fact that it does have some noises, which if I can recall, this might be the first time I believe that we had a species like this that actually had sound effects. So that's pretty cool. Regardless, I'm really excited to actually see this out of the packaging and uh, I'm going to go ahead, pop it out. And we'll take a look at it from there. So here we go. We've got our Gripposuchus Sukis now out of the packaging and wow is that thing ever a looker like first of all the coloration I'm glad it changed let's readjust the camera a little bit but when we had first seen this I felt like the coloration was just a, a little bit too bright and unrealistic however on the actual final product it looks way nicer definitely a lot more natural and realistic overall and another thing that's really cool about the figure is look at the teeth on it the teeth look way better than the teeth that we've seen on any of the previously released species like this. So, you know, Mattel definitely gets some major points for the addition of those really, really nice looking teeth. But uh, it's also the first time I believe we've seen a species like this in this size range. I don't believe we've ever seen that before because they're usually either much larger or smaller. So definitely hyped about this one. Let's jump to a closer look and check it out from there. So starting up here at the head sculpt, you can see we, as always, when it comes to a Mattel figure, have really nice looking skin texture. Definitely very impressive, obviously very crocodilian. I think it looks great when it comes to the kind of rough and rugged looking skin texture we have on the figure. And that is pretty much exactly as I would expect to see for this species. You see we have a very dark bluish tone for the body color. You also have a few kind of ridges over the top of the eye right there, which is pretty cool. As you lead back into the eye, you can see it's a little bit misplaced. It's definitely not perfect, but it's not too far off. Unfortunately, we don't have a black pupil, but since the body color is a dark tone, it looks okay because you can see the dark blue is the coloration of the pupil. Again, look at how good those teeth look. They're a rubbery sort of a uh, feel now so they're very flexible which isn't something we've really seen before but oh man they look so much better than the teeth that Mattel was including previously they just look way more realistic and just based on the teeth alone once I find one of these in store I'm absolutely snagging it and repainting it I just have to do it but again as always you can see we have an articulated jaw both the upper and lower jaw open up very nicely we have a very light pinkish tone for the inside of the mouth you can see the tongue sculpted in there also a really nice gloss coat is included on the inside of the mouth and you can see some nice looking detail not anything impressive it's obviously a little muted but it's decent up there on the inside of the mouth on the upper side and again we also have that pinkish tone up there and again that nice satin shine that nice gloss coat so a really nice looking inside of the mouth for this figure and this is another of those figures from Mattel that have that fully painted look and feel which is fantastic as you lead back here into the neck region you can see some skin detail like some you know creasing and stuff in this skin you can also see some scoots moving down along the back of the neck and you can see obviously we have this uh, lighter tone of color here running along the underside we have the entire lower jaw overtaken with it you can also see that it kind of designs down here into the throat but we also have some of the dark blues like sporadically randomly popping up here on the underside as well which I really like. The underside definitely sports the type of skin texture you would expect to see on the underside of a species like this. As you continue to move back we continue to have that very armored sort of a look to the back of the Gripposuchus and we also pick up these kind of uh, you know ridge like scoots running along the side of the animal as you lead down into the front leg you can see the leg is very nicely sculpted very very crocodilian style skin texture which again is exactly what you would expect to see as you lead down you've got some nicely sculpted toes you can see some wrinkling in the wrist as well and you can see that even though we don't actually have nail paint we do have a gloss coat for the nails so it gives it the illusion of having nail paint and when you have a dark tone like this for the body color I think it actually works pretty nicely so 
furthering that fully painted look, I think. You can also see we have more of that, you know, lighter tone from the underside running along the stomach here, kind of leading up and designing up as we again transition then back to the blue. You can see all sorts of really impressive looking skin texture in the stomach region right there. It looks great if you ask me. As you continue to move along, you can see the rear leg is folded and bent very nicely as the Riposuchus is just sitting here. You can see the foot sculpt back here also looks really good. Again, the nails also sport a gloss coat here for the rear leg. And then we lead back up. You can see we lead out into the tail. There's a seam for the tail because the tail comes disconnected as most, you know, wild roar figures usually do. And then as you lead out into the tail, you pick up a really cool striping effect. There's like a very dark tone, like a dark... Uh, it's almost hard to tell if it's like, yeah, I think it's like a dark brown that sort of stripes as you lead out into the tail. You get three stripes before it's gone, but it's just really nice to see paintwork out onto the tail as always. You can see that the lighter tone of the underbelly does kind of end in the groin. We don't run that out onto the tail. There is also a very nice curve to the tail for the figure as well. And then if we take a look at the opposing side, you're really not going to see much as far as a difference goes. You will see, though, that the eye, I think, is placed a little bit better over here compared to what we saw on the initial side. And uh, from up above, you can see, again, same deal. The body's pretty straightforward. The legs seem to be in the same position. Overall, no real big differences as far as that goes. And then you lead out into the tail again with that really nice curve and that striping effect. So absolutely a fantastic sculpt and a really nicely painted figure and just in case you would like to add it to your collection there is the jurassic facts app code for you to add the grip but we also of course have you know action features or at least an action feature and uh, articulation we can obviously see that we have the articulation of both the upper and lower jaw and articulation in the neck I would imagine that's probably all going to have something to do with the action feature you also have articulation in the legs forward and back it's a little bit jerky as it often is but still works pretty smoothly and then of course the tail is on a swivel so you can articulate it the legs don't come out away from the body or anything though but i wouldn't really expect them to with a species like this so let's go ahead and check out the action feature interesting noises So I really like this because first of all, the button isn't so obnoxious looking. You can see it's there, but it's not as hideous as some previously released figures buttons have been. But also, I like it because you can do things like this where you can, you know, stop it at a certain point and then display the figure from that point. So you can see we've got a really cool tilt in the neck with the mouth open that is a really really neat way to display the figure on your shelf so i'm definitely a fan of the action feature and it is pretty much exactly what you would want when it comes to a species like this if we look at it from the front you can see that the head tilts basically and snaps the jaws And I think the noises are pretty cool as well. So as far as a size goes, for a length, you are looking at right around 13 inches or about 33 centimeters. And the highest point would probably be the tip of the snout. You are looking at approaching two and three quarter inches, but not really there yet. Or a little over six and a half centimeters for a size comparison. There is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, Robert Muldoon, and the Collect A Human Being next to our Gripposuchus. And you can see it sports a pretty nice size, obviously a lot smaller than, say, the Sarcosuchus that they've released previously, but still does have a very nice, very impressive size overall. We've also got a Mattel Velociraptor and Dilophosaurus stepping in here for a size next to the Gripposuchus, looking almost like they are attacking it. For another size comparison, we have the recently released Caprosuchus here next to the Gripposuchus, as well as the Mattel Prestosuchus again, uh, coming in here for a comparison next to our Gripposuchus. But the one comparison I think most people would probably want to see would be the Sarcosuchus next to the Gripposuchus. And you can see the Mattel Sarcosuchus is significantly larger than our Gripposuchus. Obviously, there is a pretty good size difference. If we actually put the two next to each other, if you put this one in front, you can see that the uh, Sarcosuchus is definitely, you know, significantly larger 
in body mass, a little bit bigger in length, just generally larger than our Gripasuchus, but the Gripasuchus still has a very nice size to it. So this brand new Mattel Jurassic World Epic Evolution Wild Roar Gripasuchus is a fantastic release. When I had first seen that this was getting released, I was first of all very excited because it's an awesome species choice, but I was a little let down by the coloration they had put on it because I felt like the coloration looked very childish and didn't look very natural or realistic. However, fast forward to this, the actual release of the figure, in my opinions, have completely changed on that. They have altered the tones of color to make them darker and more natural overall, causing the figure to look far more realistic than it initially did, and actually really nicely done here in person. And even with that lighter tone of the underside, you know, I absolutely could see that being the coloration of a species like this. It somehow works, and it works really nicely. So the paint apps look great on this from head to tail you have coloration and even the uh, nails again having that gloss coat gives them the appearance of being painted the inside of the mouth has a fully painted look to it which is also awesome so I would say it's probably one of the nicest painted figures from Mattel to come along in quite some time on top of that the sculpt is awesome it is very highly detailed and looks exceptional and has a uniqueness to it that again differentiates it from similar species that we've seen in the past like the sarcosuchus it you know that looks very similar to this you can see there is some obvious differences on this one that sets it apart as well as of course a different size because it is a little bit smaller than the sarcosuchus and this is again like i said the first time i believe we've had a species like this in this size range so that's really cool it's also the first time that we've had a species like this that actually had sound effects so that's also really neat and uh, definitely a fun aspect to the figure. On top of that, it sports some pretty smooth articulation, a little jerkiness in the legs, but that's never a big deal. And you have a really cool action feature, and I love the action feature because it allows you to pose the figure in different ways, which is also a really nice touch. So overall, this is a fantastic figure, and one that I very much so highly recommend. Probably one of my favorite Mattel figures to come along in quite a while. So I want to give a huge thank you to Plush Boy Q, who was actually awesome enough to grab this and send it my way so that I could get a whole of it rather than searching for weeks trying to find it in store so a massive thank you goes out to him but he did find this in walmart so if you are interested start checking your local walmart and hopefully it will be there soon and also like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching